a lot of those issues that you talked about in the past probably would have been prevented with the the fit and proper owner test that they now have that they didn't have that we've seen 777 have to go through and all the all the hurdles and obstacles they've had to do with our situation obviously that the icelandic banking situation it just crashed freak situation that happened with us they they were doing some madness by just paying bang average players really high wages but yeah, yeah, yeah. the reason why we were fucked is because the the icelandic banking crash um but I look at it and I think, surely there. But a question on that, a, and I hear yeah. you. It's not always the owner's fault as well. So the point is, though, imagine if it was 2024, and the debt because of your wages, and then the tax because of what they're pumped in no. was 400 million. There's a massive possibility you go out of business. That you never, yeah. you never yeah. see West Ham play again. Surely the solution has to be some sort of thing of like, okay, you want to pump in your money into this club. By all means, do it, but you you cannot write it as debt. Like you cannot be a debtor to your club. You have to donate to, you know, really donate it to the club. Like so, yeah, you want to give a hundred million to the club. That has to be written off. You can't sit there and have that as a debt. That needs to be some sort of system in place. So, if for some reason that owner decided, yeah, I'm done. I'm not interested, and they've pumped in five hundred mil. Well, that's it. They don't. The club don't owe you nothing. It don't owe anyone nothing. You're not allowed to put a club into debt, which is very interesting because Man United have been a club last time. I don't know how the debt has changed, but last time I checked, the debt was like nearly a billion pounds. Right, the last time I actually looked at the figures, I don't know if it's come down or what. And they've been a club that, despite being nearly a billion in debt, have been allowed to spend nearly a billion. So where do we look at it right? like you're allowed to be so much in debt what just because they just value, we value the club at way more than a billion that that has to be yeah, a, a, no, I, I, I agree the debt should be looked at also what you've got to look at is it isn't just debt as in borrowed money so every player that's on a contract essentially is a debt to the club because mm. the club is a secured creditor to that player so if you and this is the, this is what I mean by the money we're talking about these days let's just say a billionaire buys Everton tomorrow. A billionaire who's worth 50 billion and says, I'm going to make this the best team in the world. And he phones up Mbappe and says, I'm buying you out of your Real Madrid contract and I'm paying you 10 million pound a week. That's 520 million pound of debt for five years that he has just created. That's 2.5 billion pound of debt now that, that they now have. Say he does that to five or six players and they have a five years worth of debt that is at three and a half, four billion. Now, I agree. If the owners all say, we'll put all that into a, a, a bond somewhere, so if I die, it's all taken care of, great. Yeah. But I can almost guarantee you now that only a small percentage of the manager, the, the owners will agree to do that because that is how these wealthy people work. They don't even like to use their own money half the time, no matter where they're from. The problem you then have with an owner like that, say the country is in gets sanctioned. Say a lot of his money is tied up in stocks and shares and there's a collapse and the money falls away. Who the hell is going to save Everton from a two, three, four billion pound debt of contracts that erode? No one. That they essentially, and that's the point. I, I, I don't think you're wrong, but no one challenges these owners on that. No one says, "Well, you can spend more, but pump more money in." These owners don't want to do it. History shows us the vast majority, not Roman, not the Sheikh, but the vast majority, leave their clubs high and dry, sell the debt for a low, low amount of money to a new buyer and move on. The problem, none of them pay it off. We've just seen it with Rangers. A billionaire buys them, 70 million quid it would have taken to save that club. Didn't do it. it do, that, do, that for do, me you, is, do you remember is when worry. we got sanctioned for third-party ownership of Tevez and Mascarano, yes. right? Because that weren't allowed. The league. Exactly. We got 20 million we had to pay for Jeff or United. All the good that done him. But... You know, if you look at it, surely then, and what you're saying is right, yeah, because the contracts are a different thing. If an owner owns the club, surely then we can look at it and go, okay, the, the contract for the player is to the owner. So so say Ineos or the Glazers, whatever, I don't know what the percentage makeup is. So, you know, they sign a new player coming in. Say you signed Haaland. Well, that contract to be paid is you know, against the ownership to Ineos the Glaziers. And if they leave, they still have to honour that contract. 
Mm. So, I don't think that's how it's done, though, Lawless. The no, it's not. What I'm talking about is... It's, it's, yeah, no, you're saying it they, should. Is that what they, you're saying? The, 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 the problem that you have, if you look at how most billionaires even get their cash, is that they get it through debt. Most of them borrow the money. Like This is the thing. The way rich people actually operate, it isn't like you and me with their money in our bank account. We go and take some cash and pay it. It's all done with debt, and they, lump, they lumber the debt against certain things and certain assets. And I'm all for what you're saying, but I would wager... I put a thousand pound bet down now that if the owners of the clubs, if the Premier League said that's what we're going to do, you got to vote for it. I bet you get a, a, a voting of like 18 to two in favor of not doing it because these owners, most of them will not want to put the financial liability against themselves, no matter how rich they are. How do we know this? Because through the history of football, when it was wealthy people, the millionaires, the multimillionaires and billionaires owning club clubs, it's followed the same suit. The only difference being is clubs didn't go out of business many, many years ago because there was a lot more wealthy people around than they are billionaires. The problem you've now got is there's no one richer to buy these clubs if it goes wrong. So you have to have these restraints. And I feel like too many football fans are selfish. And it's almost like once a horse is bolted, it's bolted. And if we allow this to happen, we'll never get fo- like it, it's going to a level of spending. Nobody predicted. No one ever felt the football would have this much money coming into it. And I worry about it genuinely. I, I really do. Uh, Halls, one of our members here, says, Terry, continue continue to beat the drum, mate. Fans only care about their own club. They do. And this is the irony. I'm not worried about Man United financially. You know, we, we're still one of the wealthiest clubs in the world after being crap for a decade. One day we'll be good again. We're always going to have money and I'm always going to support my football club. We are fine, at least for the next 50, 60 years. I worry about the poor sods who get an owner and go, oh, we're going to be up there with you, and it doesn't work out. And I say this to a lot of Newcastle fans that are desperate for their owners to spend whatever they want. If it happens, I actually wish you all the best. But if it happens due to your wish, and in five years you don't exist anymore, if I hear one fan cry who said, let us spend what we want, I'm not having it. Because you're it, it, people are asking, they're asking for this. They're, they're almost letting the wolf to the door. I'm not saying you've got bad owners. We've already established that things can happen outside of their control. Things can happen. The world is a mad place. Be careful. Um, but viewers, let us know what you think. Let us know what you feel in the comments section below. Could City, if they win this case, could it lead to the end of the Premier League? I want to get your views. I want to get your opinion. Could it damage a lot of clubs? Um, so when you say the end of the Premier League, Ted, I just want to ask you specifically. Like, yeah. Obviously, you're not meaning we ain't got no Premier League to watch and it's going to no, go No, I am. Fast. No, I do mean oh, that. Oh, wow. Well, because this opens up a can of worms as well. Man United and Liverpool got refused extra TV money over everybody else because we get all the views 10 years ago through the same democratic process. That could now be deemed as un- anti-competition comp- laws. Um, if, if City win it, they could sue for that. How many clubs are going to start suing now for money? And not the clubs in the fans, the owners, who a lot of them care, especially the owners who are owned by, you know, the, the clubs that are owned by hedge funds and investment companies. I worry about the knock-on effect of this situation. If City lose, well, they've set the precedent of suing each other now. Could somebody sue them? If they, if the 115 gets proven, who's going to sue them? Could you sue other clubs? The, the problem that you now have is that you're opening up a can of worms that I'm worried, and I am looking at worst-case scenario. I am, but it's because I love this game so much, and I think if we bury our heads in the sand and pretend that nothing bad's going to happen, it's like we all think the Premier League's here forever. There's probably been a lot of sports and, you know, TV shows and record labels that felt that and stuff can go wrong. I, I, I genuinely worry. I really, really do. I think worry. City need to get punished for this. I'm not going to lie to you. If they lose this case, they need to get punished for this. And I don't know what the punishment is before anyone says anything crazy and say jealousy, this, this and that. But I think they need to get punished for this. And you need to make, uh, 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 I would say, like, set a statement out of them. I'm not going to lie to you. You can't, but you can't make... Can you make a, a sporting punishment for something that happened outside of the sporting realm? If they're suing an organization, of course, and they don't win that case, say points deduction. Well, that's it's nothing to do with the sport. It's no, no, the but, but shape, it's the owners of Man City suing an organization. So you can't make a sporting punishment off of something that hasn't happened in the sporting capacity. No, so so first of all, isn't it Man City suing the Premier League, not? Sheikh Mansour and no, their hedge Man- fund. Yeah, Manchester City suing the Premier League exactly. and suing them for damages, yes. So that makes a, a huge difference right there because you're not talking about the owners. You're talking about the club as an entity suing the league as an entity, not individuals between between both. So you could. Number two, also, we've seen the likes of Forrest and, and Everton 
pay penalties in point deductions for profit sustainability issues, which is financial. So it's not like they violated something in terms of the game. They violated something in terms of well, financial. Yeah, because it gave them, at the end of the day, they, they got an, an unfair advantage, didn't they, by circumventing those well, rules. Okay, but that's still financials. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah, I mean, I mean there's, there's, so, there's so much in it. Um, I don't know if they'll punish them, but they obviously can be countersued. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, and, and and that may, I mean, again, it's all going to depend on what, what I find really interesting. Again, one of the, the funniest bits for me is they're moaning about the voting process that they take part in three or four times a year and, and vote in every single time. This is what I, I mean, wanted to state there, but I, you know, I'm this what reminds me up. of, I see, and I'm not saying this isn't necessarily going to happen because logistically it's very difficult, but. City, I believe Chelsea and one other club backed them so far on, 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 on this case that they're in. So, hypothetically, think about this. This is very similar to the Super League. What if City lose this case and Chelsea now were bothered by them and another club? I don't know who. Let's just say a couple clubs support them. What, what guarantees me that City and Chelsea are not going to sit there and be like, you know what, F the Premier League. Let's go start a, play, uh, a league with our own rules. That's going to be better. That's going to bef- benefit us all financially. I'm not saying this is going to happen because logistically it's very complicated for it to work. But you just, th- th- there's a I possibility mean, of something like that starting. In the reports in the Times, they're, 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 these are some of the sorts of mooted conversations that are going about that City could break away and try and reform the, the Super League. I would say it depends who joins them. Because if it's City and Chelsea, that is not getting more views than a, a league with Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool. But it's the concept, it. Terry. It's the concept because they could easily go. All these billionaires, let's be honest, all these billionaires at the end of the day, they're actually friends with each other. So the Glazers are friends with FSG, they're friends with the Cronkies. I know they all look like Carrasco in terms of club, but at the end of the day, billionaires are all friends. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. Because there's not many what, of them. So what this, <laughs> there isn't many of them. That's that's what makes it uh, su- such a rare thing. What guarantees me that Todd Bowley, after this happens, doesn't ring up Kronk as an example. And he's like, listen, I've been talking with, with the Emiratis running city and they're proposing this idea now is going to give us this amount of money, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to be able to prosper more and we're going to be able to create our version of the, of the Super League. It's, I'm not saying it will happen, but no, there's but no reason great, why it can't happen. But it's a, gr- it's a great point. And that's why I say like, exactly. the, the, both this case and the 115, if it, if it goes right, it depends how you look at right and wrong or good or bad, but it could be the end of the Premier League. Or, or at the least Premier the League got made this problem, though, Terry. It's their fault. They made this monster. They When they created the Premier League and the Sky deal, they turned football into what it is. They so, they, they, it they, they did, they, so where I would say they're responsible is that they didn't have enough checks and balances in early enough. But whether it's their fault or not, whether it's, you know, we're only going to know in years to come. You know, if, if, if there's a breakaway league and it ends up being better, more competitive billionaire owned everyone going crazy all the best players go there and you know we might all look at it in, in 10 years and go bloody hell they were right you could also get to a point and this is this is what i would make the rules up though i would say once you leave you leave forever and they might leave and then in five to ten years time that you know that it literally is like watching the saudi league and no one watches it there's no tv viewing figures and it, it wouldn't just be about them leaving it'd be about what uefa and fifa do and then what the clubs within uefa and fifa end up doing and who who joins them but it could happen you know it really it really could happen it really really could so and listen i don't necessarily think it's listen the premier league was a breakaway league initially and that's turned out to be very very good this could again this could work out and city could do it like i said maradon here says didn't united push for the era i'm not too sure who was pushing for it to be fair but like i've said I'm not saying who's right or wrong in that. Which one's going to be the right? It's going to be a bit like what Man United do with the manager. I don't think we're going to know in the short term. It's going to be a medium to long term situation if that was uh, to happen. Uh, Super chat here says Saudi could easily uh, form another league. They could. I mean, they they wouldn't be able to run it in England without the FA's permission. And I don't think the FA would. Well, again, depends how much money's offered. You know, if the Saudis say, listen, to the FA, we'll give you a trillion quid, which they could probably afford to do like that. It's done. Uh, this How is would so- a breakaway league do without? Would could it be successful without being in England? Like if Man United were in another league, playing in Saudi or whatever, do you would you still feel as connected as as passionate? Would it? No. Do you think it would still be as big? I, I feel. Do you know what? It's a weird one. I probably wouldn't because I, I mean I'm not at the games anymore because I do this for a job. But football is it's here. It's in England. It's at home. I don't feel as connected to. 
I love the Champions League as an example, but I don't. I, it's different when I watch a, a, an English team play at home versus a, 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 them play away. And I'm sure when a Spanish when a Spanish guy watches Real Madrid or Barca at home, it maybe have a slight different feeling to watching. There's a different special feeling to watching that. But there's some history history to that. I've watched some of the Saudi League. I don't feel much for it. If my club was in it, maybe it's hard to know until you're there. But I don't know if it would feel the same. I I, I feel like there's a but again, you've got someone like Staffy lives in America. I suppose it wouldn't really matter whether they were playing at Old Trafford or playing in a stadium in Manchester Saudi or United, in not in Manchester. You might have to yeah, say it's Salford there. anyway. Yeah, Wait, true. I, I already yeah, made maybe, that joke. Maybe. I think, it's, I think it all depends on who you are, where you're from. I mean, one thing I think would be different is I don't think the crowds would sound the same. And I think that the noise that crowds make in, in England, Spain, Italy, I think there's a, in France, I think there's, a, there's an element of that which we saw it in COVID. Yeah. yeah, it's a subtle element that I think people don't realize it's part of the reason they like the sport as well. And if that suddenly disappeared and it sounded like soccer aid, that would that would have a huge impact as well. So I think I think I don't know if I would like it as much.